Imagine you've just purchased a new home. You're standing in your backyard, planning out your dream garden, and you spot a corner of the yard that would be perfect for a big oak tree. So you plant a sapling, apply a little TLC over the years, and wait, hoping that it will eventually blossom into a mature tree one day. Now, you might not know it, but this is what a strategy called growth investing is all about. Putting time and effort into something in its early days when there's a lot of uncertainty so that you may receive a major payoff down the line if successful. Want to learn more? Then grab a shovel and let's dig in. A growth investor's main goal is to maximize their investment returns over the long term. They typically look for companies that are expected to increase their profits at a much faster rate than others in their industry and see their stock prices rise dramatically as a result. Just like a sapling growing quickly in its first few years. Compare that to an income investor whose main goal is to maximize the money they receive from their investments today. They'd likely favor more established and predictable businesses that pay a dividend, like a mature tree that already offers a lot of shade. Or a value investor whose main goal is to buy investments they believe to be undervalued to sell at a higher price down the line. They'd look for withering trees that are crying out for more water and a little pruning. So now that you understand the aim of growth investing, you're probably asking yourself, what makes a company a growth stock? Well, a few things. First off, growth stocks tend to be smaller or younger companies that don't generate much, if any, profit or even revenue just yet. They're still refining their product or service and working to build up their customer base. Larger, more established growth companies exist too, but the thread is the same. They're focused on launching new products and rapidly increasing their slice of the market. Second, growth stocks tend to have a lot of room to expand their business. That could be because they might offer a unique product that solves a problem nobody else can. Think a biotechnology firm that's developed a new treatment for a rare disease. Or perhaps their service provides a more convenient solution to a problem faced by a lot of customers. Think a ride-sharing startup that makes getting around as easy as a few taps on a smartphone app. Or maybe their product drastically reduces the cost of doing business. Think a robotics manufacturer that cuts vehicle production time by 30%. Whatever it may be, growth companies address a large market and may have huge upside as a result. Third, growth stocks typically don't pay dividends. Instead, they reinvest most, if not all, of their eventual profits into expanding their business further. So investors only make money from their investment when they sell shares for more than they bought them. Finally, growth stocks tend to be expensive by many fundamental financial metrics that measure share price relative to earnings, revenue, or assets. That's because those measures only consider a company's current finances. However, growth investors care more about the profit and revenue these businesses are expected to generate in the future. Those types of metrics, while important to consider, won't tell the whole story for growth stocks. With all that said, what type of investor might lean towards growth investing? Typically, it's individuals who are investing for the longer term, at least five years. That's because it will likely take several years for a growth company to realize its potential. Plus, there are likely to be many ups and downs along the way. Long-term investors can ride out the potentially large swings in growth stocks because they have more time to make up for any declines. Shorter-term investors likely don't have that luxury. Similarly, investors who want steady income from their investments above all probably wouldn't gravitate towards growth. So if you're thinking about growth investing, make sure it fits your investor profile and time horizon. As you've probably gathered, growth investing can be summed up as higher risk, likely higher reward. We'll take a closer look at both sides of that coin in our lesson, What are the risks of growth investing?